Welcome to Fashion 53 on the road. Today we're a special place. We're in the Django Fest 2010, 10 years anniversary of this uh, festival, but most especially 100 years of Django. It's fine art. And, and today we've got the Swing Gitan band and uh, relaxing with some uh, Walla Walla wine. Just after a good performance, very good show this afternoon. Merci. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So Alfonso introduce okay. for us your band. On my left we have Mr. Tony Baylog, violin player. Yeah. Walla Walla. <laughs> Mr. Jason Miller on the guitar. Mr. Bo Sample on the bass. So that's uh, all. That's all. That's it. That's we can bring more if you like. Do you want more? <laughs> <laughs> so Alfonso, tell us first of all, how did you become in love, your passion with the Gypsy Jazz and Django and so forth. I went to the Django Reinhardt Festival in, I guess, the first time, 1996, and we were camped next to Babique Reinhardt, and a lot of great musicians were there, and I came back and just kept playing the music. I first heard it when I was a teenager, in my early teens, and uh, yeah, just fell in love with the music, like you said, yeah. Yeah, passionate. Yeah, it's just, the music is amazing. And for you, Tony? Uh, yeah, I guess I was a teenager, you know, listening to Grappelli and Reinhardt. And what can I say? It's just, you know, being a violinist, it's, it's, it's a passionate music that you have to be involved in. Yeah. Really, it's good. Okay. Oh, uh, for me, I was, uh, it was probably 10 years ago and was playing all different kinds of music and jazz and rock and all that. And then uh, someone introduced me. They said, oh, you're a guitar player. You haven't heard of this guy. Mm -hmm. And I heard it, and uh, it breathed new life for the guitar for me. Yeah. Um, well, I was uh, when I was in high school, in, I grew up in San Antonio, Texas. There was a... Uh, guitar player that I used to play with a little bit from Austin named Dave Biller and he had a he had a band he's still there actually but he he had a band that played Django Reinhardt style music and uh, so he kind of turned me on to it and I got a box set of the music and uh, used to sit in my room and try to figure figure these tunes out and uh, I don't know that that was I used to figure them out on a guitar really quietly, the bass line, so I wouldn't wake oh. my parents up. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, just a little interesting fact about the uh, bass player and Django. Of course, his greatest friend and longtime partner was Raffelli, by far the one that played the most with Django, but the second one is Emmanuel Sozu, mm -hmm. bass player. Mm -hmm. I'm just like saying that to bass players. <laughs> So tell us a bit, what do you think, Alfonso, of this festival? Like, uh, I was talking with Nick a bit earlier, you were saying you, you were here, I think, quite 2000 early. And 2003, three, three 2004, days. and then again now, six years later. And uh, I love the festival. It's, it's the town, basically, that makes it, and the people, and the people that Nick brings over from Europe and all across the States. So, you know, it's... Kind of like Jason said, you know, the music just breathes new life into, into, you know, you when you hear it, it's it's, it's alive. The music is, is um, it's a, a, a language and it's a it's a, a conversation. We try to, to to do that on stage, have that conversation, and it's 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 great. It's great to be around other players because it gives you that inspiration to go back home to Chicago and continue playing the music where there's not many gypsy jazz players and there's not French musicians and 50 bands and, and you know, like that. So these festivals are very important, you know, to keep the fire going. That's why when I went in 1996 to Samoa and I stayed a while there and absorbed as much as I could. And it took me, it lasted me about four years. I'd say it lasted a little less than that I needed to go back earlier, but I went back four years later. And every time I go back, you get that energy and the inspiration and the new songs and the new waltzes and the new techniques and the right guitars and people are so cool. They send you 
you know, back in the day before, you know, so much email and YouTube, I had friends that would send me uh, VHS tapes. So I would just sit and watch these tapes until they wear out, you know, just to pretend like I'm there, you know, to, uh, uh, to kind of be real, like not faking it or lying, you know, but kind of like having something to say, you know. So what do you think of the increase in the movement, especially in the United States and Canada over the last, I would say, 10 years, like that? Yeah, yeah, there's more and more bands, more and more people playing, and um, it's, it's happening in Europe too, you know, all over. And this, the new guys have a new sound, which is, Tony and I were talking about this. Yeah. You know, really they, good. They brought they broke the code. You know, everyone was playing Django solos, note for note. Nothing this bad. It's like a like a classical piece or something. They would you know learn the language and record the solos, and that's good. But it's kind of nice to hear this fresh sound coming out of um, out of France and also in the States. There's different bands that are playing different styles. You know, we try to do that. Put a little bit more of a a gypsy twist on the gypsy jazz, right? We do like what, Romanian sometimes, and some Moldavian stuff. On our new CD, we have some music like that. And um, flamenco music and some other styles we interject, you know, in, in the set. Kind of, yeah, what Django did. Django was Absolutely. playing American jazz, you know. And um, he did some symphonic work. He played some sort of, you know, yeah. uh, arrangements that were classical based, so. It's not so d specific and defined in, in, in niche. The actual gypsy jazz is sort of a wide, broad spectrum. There's the rumba, the waltz musette, the gypsy music, even some fado, like Portuguese fado music goes well with it, you know. So that's why I like it, because it gives you so much room, the style, you know, to play. And it's acoustic guitars that we're playing on. They're acoustic instruments, so we could just play anywhere. We don't have to lug our amps around. But we do anyway, actually, <laughs> we, for the concerts and stuff. But you know, to just jam in the backyard. Right? Yeah, that's the beauty of it. Yeah, it's you really. Got a new CD that just came out. Or yes, that's coming soon? just arrived today. Uh, I think I saw. Yeah, it's called Sweet Home, and uh, it's it's some original music of mine. I think I have like seven original songs on there, and um, we feature Tony and some music, uh, some. Uh, Moldavian and, and Romanian music, as well as a couple other American pieces. That's a Pliny, we do Avalon, we do Petite Fleur, the Sidney Boucher song. And, uh, yes, another one to come shortly after this, we hope, working on another one. Oh, all right. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, guys, for your time. What do you think of the wine? Salud. Very good, thank Very you. Salud. Salud. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks again. Thanks mm. for watching and keep drinking. Hey, great to meet you. And good gypsy jazz. Thank you. A bientôt. A bientôt. Merci. Merci.